Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you how to formulate and make a cream for yourself. Now the main difference between a cream and a lotion is obviously the viscosity of the end product. Lotions will tend to have a little bit of flow to them, they may be easily pumpable. They're not ideally suited to jars, although some lotions may still be in a jar if they're a more viscous lotion. They can also be quite low viscosity, almost a milk type of lotion consistency. While creams are usually uh, not able to run out of a jar, they're not suited to bottles, uh, and they do have that perception from the consumer of being much more moisturizing. I'm going to show you now how we construct our formula for a basic cream. Remember that when we're creating our formulas, we always create our formulas to percent by weight. So if you have been using mill or drops in your formulas previously, you'll now need to convert them to a weight and make that into a formula that is written up to 100%. To see what I mean, here is an example of the formula we'll be creating today you'll notice that it's written to 100% by weight. Now let's take a look at how we put a natural cream formula together. A cream is an emulsion, and an emulsion is composed of water and oil held together by an emulsifier. Creams are high viscosity emulsions. So if you can imagine from this picture that the dispersed phase is the oily phase, homogeneously distributed throughout a continuous water phase. That is your emulsion, and when we make it high viscosity, we consider it to be a cream. To create a cream, you need to create a high viscosity emulsion, which we do by using mid to high inputs of a combination of emulsifying waxes. We combine emulsifying waxes to get the best possible stability or shelf life, as well as the best possible structure and a pleasing skin feel. We get our structure and stability from using the emulsifying waxes and adding a gum. If you can imagine with the droplets in this slide that the little black lines uh, and little pinheads around the oil droplets are your emulsifying waxes, while the green line separating them is your gum. This helps keep the oil droplets apart so that you can get a good shelf life out of your product. You also need to use preservatives and antioxidant to get a good shelf life. And you would get efficacy from lipids, actives and other ingredients you add to the formulation to get performance. Let's take a look at the specific formulation you'll be working with today. In this formula, our non-ionic emulsifier blend is Olive M1000. I've paired this with stearic acid, a primary emulsifier which helps form the emulsion and also gives good structure. I've also added some glycerol stearate. This is a low HLB emulsifier and it helps build body to the cream without causing too much white rub in. We have a separate video on how this concept comes together if you'd like more information. You'll also see there is 12% of lipid input. This constitutes my oil phase. I've also got xanthan gum used to help build structure and stability in this formulation. I've got an, a preservative and antioxidant added. And then finally, once I've put all these inputs for all these different materials in, I've then been able to calculate my water input so that my end formula totals 100% by weight. Now let's see how we put this formula together in the lab. Again, I'll be using very basic equipment today so that you at home can also create your formula, even if you only have access to kitchen materials. Remember that our basic stirring equipment we'll be using will be a whisk and also a heat and chemical resistant spatula. You can use either a stick blender or if you have access to more high shear equipment like this propeller, or an ICA stirrer in a laboratory setting, you can use those as well. But I'll be using the basic equipment so that you can see how easy it is to put this formula together, even if you've only got access to kitchen equipment. Okay, so I've started by measuring out my water. 
Now to this I'm going to add my gum, but in a slurry form. It's very important that you always use the slurry method with natural gums. It makes it very easy to incorporate them into your formula. So first I have my gum. And now adding the glycerin. Now I'm going to add my slurried gum to my water and stir. This is a cold process. It's very easy to add a natural gum to cold water if you're using the slurry method. But it's important to stir as you add it and add it slowly so that it hydrates evenly with the water as it disperses. Now I'm going to prepare the oil phase. So what I have here is my Olive M1000, first of all. Now I'm going to be making quite a viscous cream, almost a butter-like consistency. Uh, and I'm using two other types of emulsifiers to help stabilize it, but also give it its beautiful consistency without excess rubbing time. So this is my stearic acid. This is an anionic emulsifier. an excellent primary emulsifier. And now I have glyceryl stearate, which is a low HLB emulsifier. And to learn more about these techniques, um, you can study additional courses with us. We also have an excellent video on formulation fix it, reducing white rubbing time. And that's to help build viscosity in very natural products without ending up with that excess white rubbing time on the skin. And if you watch that video, you'll understand fully why I'm combining these particular emulsifiers together. So now to add the lipids. Now I'm going to heat and combine both phases. Now I'm heating both phases. It's really important that the water phase gets heated to at least the same temperature that the oil phase requires to be completely liquid and melted. The reason for this is because I'm going to be adding molten waxes, so all liquid form to my water phase. And in order to get that really fine droplet distribution, I need to make sure that my water phase is hot enough to keep the waxes molten. If I add the waxes, uh, my lipid phase, even if it's liquid and nice and hot and molten, to water that is not hot enough to keep it molten while the droplets form, I'll end up with waxy clumps forming. That's undesirable. So it's very important that I heat this to the temperature where I've melted all of my waxes and then add that to my water, which must also be the same temperature as my molten lipid phase. Now I'm using a direct heat method. You can use water baths if you want. Water baths will be a slower but more controlled way of heating. Um, and you would usually use thermometers to test the temperature as you get uh, better at preparing your samples. You'll find you won't need them because you'll be able to tell First of all, this will be molten and you'll be able to tell when your water is hot enough to add. Make sure you don't get any boiling, um, excessive boiling of your lipids or of your water phase, otherwise you'll end up affecting the materials. And if your oil phase is starting to get too hot while you're waiting for your water to catch up, simply remove it from the heat while you wait. Once your water is at the required temperature, add your oil to the water and stir vigorously to disperse the molten oil throughout the hot water. When combining, you should have a nice glossy looking emulsion. Don't worry that it is very liquid and very runny when it's still hot because the waxes simply haven't set yet. As an example, here is product I prepared yesterday. This is the same formula and you can see it's very viscous. It's not running, it's not falling out of that bowl. This is the same product when it's been left to set overnight. And it has created a beautiful cream product. 
that rubs in very easily. Again, if you want a formulation fix it on how to solve excessive white rub in time, please watch our video on formulation fix it um, that explain why I've chosen the materials I have for this formula, which ensures the product rubs in easily as soon as it's put onto the skin. Continue to stir as the product cools. You will see it thickens up. Once it's below 40 degrees, you can add your heat sensitive materials. You could also at this stage add your actives, extracts, essential oils or fragrances. Now it's time to adjust pH. Now when you're starting out at home you might only have access to pH strips. So I'm going to show you how to use those now. So you start by taking your pH strip, you dip it into the product, wipe off the excess on the side and then look for the colour that forms and compare it to the colour chart of the pack. You'll see in this case it's quite acidic it's around 4.5 or below. Now we would normally want to adjust the product to a pH of 5.5 to be compatible with the skin. There are some times where you might not want to use this pH, for example if you've got certain actives that require a different pH, but most of the time your body care products would be adjusted to around 5.5. Now I'm going to show you how to adjust pH using a proper pH probe. Because the pH is quite acidic and the preservative has brought that pH down, we need to bring the pH back up to around 5.5 and we do this using an alkalizing solution. Once you've got your pH to around 5.5, you can pack off your product at room temperature. It's important to check pH at room temperature because pH is temperature affected. Remember that while the product is looking like this today, it has thickened up considerably since we have allowed it to cool. It will still set further overnight to become a true buttery creamy consistency by tomorrow. And that's all there is to it. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to prepare your own emulsions at home and also how to create the formulas. If you'd like to learn more advanced formulation techniques or how to manipulate the formulas to create something that's truly unique and your own, you can find out more information about all of our courses online or email us. Please look out for other videos in this series. Happy formulating!